Okay, in this video we're going to look at the following question. If we have a modular equivalence, CA is congruent to CB mod N, when can we cancel C? In other words, when do we know that A is congruent to B mod N? So that's what we want to look at. Before we look at uh, when this is possible and the proof, let's look at some examples. So, for example, if we have 2 times A equal con is, is congruent to 0 mod 4. Now, notice that's the same thing as saying 2 times A is congruent to 2 times 0 mod 4. But in this case, we can't just cancel the 2 and say that A is congruent to 0 mod 4. Sure, A is congruent to 0 mod 4 is a solution to this equivalence, but A is congruent to 2 mod 4 is also a solution to this equivalence. So now here we notice that in this setup, A is congruent to 0 mod 4, which would be what we got if we cancel the 2's, but A is also congruent to 2 mod 4. That's another possible solution to this equivalence because if A is congruent to 2 mod 4, then 2 times A is congruent to 4 mod 4, which is 0 mod 4. Again, also a solution to this modular equivalence. So, <clears throat> let's get into what we need to be true for uh, this cancellation to take place, and let's rephrase this a little bit. So, we'll write it as a proposition, and we'll say that um, the following, uh, for, for A, B, and C in Z, we have... Um, We have CA is congruent to CB mod N if and only if A is congruent to B mod, and so it won't be N anymore, it'll be N divided by the GCD of N and C. Okay. Great, so uh, let's look at this proof. Um, and let's do this direction first. Okay, great. So now, so we'll suppose that CA is congruent to CB mod N. Good, and now notice that tells us that N divides CA uh, minus b, so c times the quantity a minus b. Okay, good. And now what we can do is the, write this as c times a minus b equals n times k for k in some integer, kind of by the definition of this divisibility. Great. Now we can divide both sides of this equation by the GCD of C and N, and we'll have another integer equation. Because C is obviously divisible by the GCD of C and N, and so is N. So um, let's let D equal the GCD of C and N, and then notice that C over D times A minus B equals N over D times K. Okay, good. Now, uh, it's not so hard to see, and it's, an, it's a pretty simple exercise, to notice that C over D and N over D are relatively prime. So let's notice that. So observe that the GCD of C over D and N over D equals 1. So what that means, since the right-hand side of this equation is a multiple of n over d, that means the, right, the left-hand side is also a multiple of n over d. But since we have this relatively primeness, none of that's coming from c over d. So that means that a over b, sorry, a minus b is a multiple of n over k. So that summarizes into a minus b equals n over d times k prime, where k prime is some integer. 
Okay, great. But um, finally, that means A is congruent to B mod N over D. But now notice D is the GCD of C and N. So we've ended up with the right-hand side of this equivalence. So I won't do um, the reverse because uh, that, that's a bit simpler and would be a nice exercise. So we'll finish the proof there. Okay, so we just finish proving this following result, that CA is congruent to CB modulo N if and only if A is congruent to B modulo N over the GCD of C and N. So sometimes we can cancel this C, um, but only if the GCD of C and N is one. Then we can just straight cancel the C with no problems at all. Otherwise, we can cancel the C, but we have to change what, what our equivalence is uh, with respect to. So uh, let's look at some examples. So for example, um, let's say we want to solve this modular equivalence. 3x is congruent to 12 mod 15. <clears throat> So, now notice this is the same thing as 3x is congruent to 3 times 4 mod 15. And now we can cancel the 3s if we change this 15 to 15 divided by the GCD of 3 and 15. So that tells us that x is congruent to 4 mod 15 mod 15 divided by the GCD of 3 and 15, which is obviously 3. So this is congruent to 4 mod 5. So that means x is congruent to 4 mod 5, but if x is congruent to 4 mod 5, then it may be 4, or it may be... Um, 9 mod 15. So that means x is congruent to 4 mod 15, or it's congruent to 9 mod 15, or it's congruent to 14 mod 15. So if we look at this in terms of the original equation, we get three solutions. Okay. Good. So let's look at um, one more example. Uh, should be should put or here. So let's say uh, 6x is congruent to 18 mod 20. So now we notice that 18 is 6 times 3 mod 20. Good. Now that tells us that x is congruent to 3 mod the GCD, or sorry, 20 divided by the GCD of 20 and 6. So the GCD of 20 and 6 is 2, so it's 20 over 2, so it's 10. So that means x is congruent to 3 mod 10. Now, what numbers does that satisfy mod 20? So that means x is congruent to 3 mod 20, or x is congruent to 13 mod 20 as well. <clears throat> okay, good. And so that gives us all of our solutions modulo 20.